This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a slim front pocket wallet available in carbon fiber and titanium. With more than 250,000 sold, a lifetime guarantee and free shipping, get 10% off with the code GOLDFISH at RidgeWallet.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Monday means it's Modern Monday here in Instant Deck Tech land, and we have a spicy one to check out today. This is Reanimator Dredge for Modern, comes to us from Samurai Fun, who took it to a 5-0 finish in a competitive Modern League on Magic Online. So congrats to Samurai Fun on a super sweet deck. A quick reminder before we break down Reanimator Dredge for Modern. If you enjoy this deck and you want to see it main to video, Videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you could do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Reanimator Dredge is kind of like combining together two different decks in Modern, partly a Dredge deck, partly a Reanimator deck, but both of those decks, Reanimator and Dredge, revolve around the graveyard. So we start off with our big graveyard filling cards, Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion, primarily Faithless Looting, which is the four of the deck is just the best way to fill the graveyard in the modern format. One mana, draw two, discard two, gets things going on turn one. Cathartic Reunion, just a one of, but gives us a bigger draw and discard or discard and draw type effect for the middle to late game once we really get going. But these cards just start getting things in the graveyard, and with Reanimator and Reg, that's where we want our things. We also have a couple of other interesting ways to fill our graveyard. Stitcher Supplier has quickly become one of the go-to ways in modern to just get cards in your graveyard. Come down on turn one for just one mana, mills three cards, and then after you chump with it or whatever, it mills three more cards on the way out. So it ends up being six cards into your graveyard for just a single mana, which is a pretty efficient deal, especially with a free chump block in between. And then mulch, a little bit odd, but basically lets you reveal four cards. You can take as many lands as you want and put them in your hand, dump the rest in the graveyard, just another one of backup way to get things in the graveyard. So as we are dumping things into the graveyard, we're eventually going going to get the dredge part of our deck in the graveyard. So Stinkweed Imp, our biggest dredger, just dredging five. So once we get in the graveyard, I feel like I explain dredge every time, but in case you don't know what it does, with dredge, you can skip your draw or any draw. It doesn't have to be the one for your turn. Anytime you would draw a card and instead of drawing, you dredge or mill a certain number of cards and get the dredge card back to your hand. So if we draw a card, Stinkweed Imp, instead of drawing, we can mill five and get the Stinkweed back to our hand. Life from the Loam does three. Dark Blast also three. So one once we get these cards in our graveyard, it's a way we can get a bunch more cards in our graveyard really, really quickly. We cast a Faithless Suiting, Dredge Stinkweed, five cards in our graveyard, Dredge another Stinkweed. That's ten cards in our graveyard for a single man off of Faithless Looting. Life from the Loam, we'll talk more about later. It has some cool synergies in the deck and kind of plays into some of our finishers. And then Dark Blast, just a one-of, good at taking down Birds of Paradise, Noble High Arcs, other small creatures in the early game, really good against like Affinity and decks like that where you can just do this every turn. Dredge it back, kill a Arcbound Ravager, dredge it back, kill a Blink Moth Nexus, repeatedly again and again and again. So, we use our dredgers for value, also to fill our graveyard. As we're dredging, we're going to get some flyers out of the deal. So, Narc Amoeba, really weird card, but basically, if it goes from our library into our graveyard, instead it goes to our battlefield. So, as we dredge, if we dredge over an Narc Amoeba, we just get a 1-1 flyer for free. And then Lingering Souls, we can cast it from our hand, but mostly we're going to dredge it over, we're going to discard it to Faithless Looting, Flash it back for two mana to get two 1-1 one, one flyers. So putting up some flying defense in the air. And then the deck gets pretty crazy as it gets to the reanimation part of things. So Unburial Rites is our primary re reanimation card. And the sweet thing about Unburial Rites is we don't got to draw it. It has flashback. And the flashback is actually cheaper than its normal cost. So if we can dredge or mill or discard this into our graveyard for just four mana, we can reanimate one of our creatures. So as we're dredging, getting these free Narc Amoebas, getting these Lingering Souls, getting things set up. We're going to mill over on Burial Rites, and we're going to mill over our finishers. So we got three big finishers for reanimation. Elish Norn can kind of just close out the game, because we're going to have these Lingering Souls tokens. We're going to have these free Narc Amoebas. We reanimate Elish Norn, gives all of our stuff plus two, plus two, so suddenly we have a huge board full of three, three flyers, and we're likely
basically going to kill a bunch of our opponent's smaller creatures. Also, surprisingly, it just locks decks like KCI, the Ironworks combo deck, out of the game. They can't play their combo pieces. It locks decks like Affinity out of the game. Anything relying on small creatures. Where Borgamost, we'll talk about that one in a minute. It is another finisher by throwing lands at our opponent's face. Iona just locks a color out of the game. So if our opponent's playing Burn, for example, and we can name Red, chances are our opponent just cannot do anything while Iona's on the battlefield. Or if our opponent's playing Merfolk and we name Blue. So really good against decks that rely heavily on one color. So when it comes to closing out the game, apart from the ways we were just talking about, one of our big plans is to use our land. So along with milling over our finishers, we also have Conflagrate. So Conflagrate or Bor Borgamos Enraged allow us to basically discard lands to deal damage. Conflagrate, we can flash it back from our graveyard after we dredge it. Two plus discard X cards to deal X damage. Bor Borgamos just has an ability where we discard a land card to deal three damage. So Life from the Loam gives us a way we just keep getting back land. So once we have Bor Borgamos, we dredge our Life from the Loam, cast it, get back three lands. That's nine damage with Bor Borgamos. Just throw those lands at our opponent's face. That's going to close out the game really quickly. And maybe right away, if we have Faithless Suitings to dredge multiple times and get back even more lands to throw at our opponent's face, Conflagrate can often hit for like seven or ten damage because we're dredging back this Life from the Loam, getting back all these lands that we can discard, and then we just get them back again anyway. So the land plan is one of our primary ways to close out the game. We can also just attack our opponent's hand with Raven's Crime, getting back the lands with Life from the Loam, using the Retrace ability on Raven's Crime, so casting it from our graveyard, also discarding a card to just make sure our opponent has no cards in hand. It can't really interact with our big reanimated finishers or whatever. So that's kind of the plan. Get some dredge value, get some lingering souls, stay alive, reanimate something huge, either kill our opponent with that huge thing, or buy these weird, tricky Life from the Loam land synergies. As far as the mana base, we get a few unique lands. Field of Ruin, Ghost Quarter for Tron, Gemstone Mine, fixing our mana, Urborg, turning everything into swamps, fixing our mana. The mana base is ridiculous. We're not going to talk about all the lands, but trust me, it's just like a million fetch lands, a billion shock lands, a bunch of basic lands, basically just crazy five color of fetchable mana base, trying to make it so we can actually cast all of our spells when we're not just winning with Dredge or Reanimation. In the sideboard, Fragmentize to protect our own graveyard, kills basically every graveyard hate spell in the format, Leyline of the Void for our opponent's graveyard to make sure that they can't go crazy Why not touching our graveyard, Inferno Titan, a sweet backup reanimation target, killing a bunch of stuff, throwing damage at our opponent's face, Inquisition, Raven's Crime to pick apart our opponent's hand, Spyglass can deal with, like, Planeswalkers, some Sweepers, like Oblivion Stone, Stony Silence for Affinity and Tron, and that is Reanimator Dredge for Modern, and that's been our instant deck tech for today, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon!